This is an optional video for those of you who are interested in doing this very difficult question, okay? So first we are going to assume that we have an equality, meaning that it's an equal sign versus an inequality, because that way it's a little bit easier to explain. Now, as you can see here, um, guys, we have an x minus one in the bottom. Whoops, that shouldn't be that way. X, whoa, come on. X minus one in the bottom. I meant to grab a highlighter. Um, so that means the denominator can't be zero. That immediately tell us that we have to exclude x can never ever be one because one would make that denominator denominator zero therefore we can't have one so we will naturally move the two over here if it's an equality so we are going to pretend this is an equality okay because it's easier to explain this we will solve more of this later uh, but i want to throw out a very difficult question to see some of you are interested in trying it out and it's okay if you are not okay so i'm going to multiply both sides students by the lowest common denominator which in this case is an x minus one what you multiply to one side you multiply to the other that's why we now have three x plus one because this right here will erase each other out since they are canceling then on the right side we have the quantity of x minus one times two that again allows us to distribute that okay so on the right side is 2x minus 2. On the left side, we just have the numerator, which is 3x plus 1. Then from here, we will try to solve normally. Minus 2x of both sides. Okay, just like that. Let me pinch it in. And then I'm going to speed this up by moving the 1 to the right side. That will allow me to grab another pen here to simplify. That will be gone that's going to be gone so x students is going to be negative three but here's why it's difficult we know that on our number line x could never ever be one okay one needs to be excluded from our set of answers solution set okay so it's immediately going to have a hole we know x is going to be bigger than than um than negative three so that's inclusive and we can see that it's inclusive because of that as well so we currently have three set of solutions. It could be here, it could be here, and or it could be here. So we are going to pick a number. So over here, we can technically pick a negative 100, okay? Any number, negative, any number on that side is fine. Anything that's going to be on the left side, aka smaller than negative three. We can pick negative four all the way to negative one million, or even higher than that. In the middle of negative 3 and 1, we could pick 0, because 0 is always easy to plug it in. And on the right side of 1, anything bigger than 1. 100, 1,000, let's pick 1,000, because it doesn't really matter. Okay, then our job is to see which region, which set of solutions we can keep, okay? When we can keep, that means it's, would it make it true? So I'm going to plug in negative 100 to the original. 3 times negative 100, my computer is very slow, okay, and then divided by, I'm sorry, plus 1, divided by negative 100 minus 1 minus 2, true or false, bigger than or equal to 0, okay, so all we are looking forward to see is true or false. So on the numerator, 3 times negative 100 is negative 300 plus 1. That's going to be a negative, slowly, 299 divided by negative 101 minus 2, bigger than or equal to 0, question mark. And so it's going to say, okay, well, negative 299 divided by 101, that's definitely going to be a positive number. And a positive number, students, as you can see, minus 2. So a positive 299 divided by, by positive 101, because negative divided by negative is positive, minus 2 is going to be bigger than 0 because, like, this is almost 300, okay? And then 300 divided by almost 100, that's sort of closer to 3. 
and a positive three minus one, whatever that number is, is going to be bigger than zero, okay? Um, not equal to, but bigger than zero. So that statement is going to be true. So we're gonna shade that in, okay? Then if we pick zero to see true or false, then we're gonna say, okay, zero times three is zero. Zero plus one is one on the numerator. Zero minus one is negative one minus two, true or false, okay? Would this give us something bigger than zero or equal to zero? Well, negative one, it's here, minus three, bigger than or equal to zero is really, oops, is really the question mark, and that's not true. So this right here is false, so we are not shading in the middle, because that's not going to give us a number that's gonna be equal to zero or bigger than zero. Then we are going to pick something to the right, and when we test it, it's going to be true because when we plug in like a thousand, a thousand times three is three thousand, three thousand plus one is three thousand and one, and a thousand minus one, right? That's sort of like what, 999? So when you have something close to three thousand divided by something close to a thousand, that's going to give us three. And three minus two is definitely something positive going to be bigger than or key equal to zero. In this case, it's bigger than zero. So on the right side, it's also true. So that's why I said this is difficult and you don't need to, to worry about this. This is only for those of you who are interested in doing this. So when you write your inequality, x is going to be less than negative three or x is bigger than one. That's what you want to do. Now, if you want interval notation, let me get a different color. Let me pinch it in. So interval notation, for those of you who are interested, is gonna look like this. Negative infinity to negative three. Let me move this over. We're going to have a bracket, union, parentheses, one to infinity, just like that.